Hello friends, Tanya here for Trinity Stamps and this week I am making a magical princess birthday card. I brought out the Build a Big Top stamp, or excuse me, die set and used all of those pieces to create this princess tent. It actually started out as pink cardstock and I had um, ink blended some Kitsch Flamingo Distress Ink and some Dusty Concord Distress Ink to add some depth to all the pieces on this um, big top tent. I really enjoyed creating play things for my children and one of their favorite things was a tent that I created that fit over a um, folding table. You know those square card tables that are a staple at every family gathering. Well, this Build a Big Top die set has that versatility to me because you can make all kinds of things with this Big Top tent. You can make a camping tent. You can make this whimsical birthday tent. You can make a circus tent. You could make it a wedding tent. You could make it anything you want. I love how the dies are so carefully thought out. You have more than one way to use these banners. There's more than one way to create the banners. There's little flags that you can glue on if you wanted multicolor and dimensional flags. You've got this entrance um, to the tent that's a separate piece and adds some dimension. And then you have the inserts that create the look of the floor of the tent in the wall of the tent beyond inside the doorway. It is such a well thought out die set. <clears throat> well worth it if you've got kiddos or any kind of performing or enjoy whimsical stamps at all. I could even see this as a medieval camp um, setting. It's great for scene building. I love this little flag and there's a little tiny piece in the die set that you use to create a shadow in your flag so it really looks like it's flapping in the wind. I love it. I didn't know if I'd like it, but as soon as I added it to one of the flags, I understood the purpose and it is beautiful. This is the tent I created, the little princess tent. I did end up making two of them because I made one for another, or just a play. And I figured I better show you how I created it to begin with. So now we're going to move on to the rest of the card. This is going to be a five by seven card and I'm going to use some of the stencils. I'm using a stencil. This is the spring day scene builder stencil and it's got several components that you can mix and match together. I am again using my Misty to hold my um, stencils in place with the magnets. My Misty is upside down and I've taken twig brown Atelier Ink on 3 ink and I'm using it to create the tree trunk. I'm just going to do that along the whole one side of this 5 by 7 panel. I do end up fussy cutting this later and it comes together so quickly. You can make this trunk as wide as you want. You can make it taller if you want. You don't have to limit yourself to the size of this stencil because you can slide it up and down and create and to the side and you can flip it over <clears throat> which I will do because I'm going to make two trees to frame this scene. Now I'm going to use the the stencil for the tree top. I'm going to use the Goddess Green Atelier ink with the Blending Buddy brushes from Ink on or excuse me from <laughs> Trinity Stamps. These are uniquely shaped. They have a slightly pointed tip so that you can get in smaller spaces without having that just oval shaped head. I'm generously applying the Goddess Green ink all over this tree top. I do end up adding some other colors to this to create some branches to add some depth. <clears throat> I really like this spring day scene builder stencil set because it's got so many components that you can use in so many ways. The branches that I'm going to be using you can use as brush. I think that's actually what they're supposed to be bushes and shrubs but I'm using them for branches here. 
I pulled out some Distress Oxide inks to add some depth, depth to this. And this one is Mode Lawn, I believe. And I put that right over that branch that's sticking out. Now we're going to create some other branch um, illusions, at details, with more of the different shrub and bush stencil components. Now there's two different, there's two layers to each style of those brushes and shrubs. I'm only using one of, oh, maybe I'm using two. I don't remember. I just kind of randomly turned it and uh, found the one that I, found, found the ones that I thought would look good. Now I'm moving on to Rustic Wilderness, which is the darkest of the three greens that I end up using. And I add a few more branches. And as you can see, I just kind of uh, blend that into the rest past the edge of the stencil so you don't have a sharp line from the edge of the stencil. Now I'm going to quickly fussy cut this out. You don't have to be exact because it's a tree. It's kind of a natural um, image, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I am going to make sure that there isn't any white cardstock left because I want this just to be the tree. <clears throat> so I'm just going to trim a little more off there and that's going to be the tree number one. I do use that same piece of paper and stencil and trim out a second tree to do on the other side. Now I'm using the grass portion of the stencil set and I'm going to stencil the uh, grass in mowed lawn, which is totally appropriate. <laughs> and we're going to layer <clears throat> some more grass with the Slimline Scenic Border Dye that I cut out of some green cardstock, kind of a springy green. And I did also ink blend some mowed lawn on the tops of that to add a little depth and um, character to it. Since everything else is ink blended on this page or on this card, I didn't want that to look out of space out of place by not being ink blended. Now I'm going to come back with some with the two purple or the purple and the pink that we used which was Kitsch Flamingo and Dusty Concord. Now those are <clears throat> excuse me those are the um, did I use the distress inks? I think I just used the distress inks for these not the distress oxides and I did some soft ink blending of this puffy cloud. I did use the puffy cloud stencil here. I used a whole lot of supplies in this card, <laughs> but it was well worth it. So I'm kind of uh, mapping out what I want to do on this four and a half by six and a half inch panel that's going to end up on the card front. Building my scene here. I did decide to add a little spatter with some liquid pixie dust. Now we're going to add that tent to the background. We've already glued down the trees with a little dimension behind them and some dimension behind the grass. Now we're going to add this girl who I colored in matching purples from the Abracadabra stamp set and this little scrap of grass that I trimmed off because it was too long for the card and I decided we needed a little grass on the other side of that hill. So that works perfectly in there. And you're going to get a little look at that right there because I'm moving too fast otherwise. I did add a little bit of coaster blank on the back of that or a layer of coaster blank on the back of that. And now we're going to add that to a 5 by 7 card base. And we need to add the sentiment. I'm just centering that on there quickly. Thankfully, I still am pretty good at centering things. And if it's not fantastic, you'll never know. I'll be the only one that notices. I'm pulling out the Magical Sentiment die. This is the coordinating die for the Magical Sentiments stamp set, which is on the last chance list. I love it. I use it all the time. It goes very well with the wizard, Wizarding World stuff. And it's going very well with this um, release from, oh my, a month was this? April? <laughs> that we're still playing with because it's such a beautiful release. It's so fun. I'm just going to add the AL that tra transforms the magic to magical 
and it's pretty seamless once you get it all glued down. I die cut it from some mirror cardstock, I believe in gold. Now I'm going to add the other components of the sentiment. These are actually from the Wish uh, Magical Sentiments stamp set. And I did not stamp the first one very well. I think I had a piece of dog hair on there. Yes, I have a puppy. She shares her love. <laughs> I also used a sentiment banner die from the four bar builder set. If you don't have that, that one's on the last chance list also. And it is fantastic. I use pieces of that all the time, even if I'm not making four bar cards. Adding a little bit of coaster blank to the back of the sentiments that I uh, trimmed the banner ends off of. And we're going to add those above and below and to the sides of the magical word. Almost done with this card. Just trimming a little bit of that coaster blank off of there. There are a whole lot of kiddos that would love this. Maybe the thought of having a tent in the woods more than getting a magical card. But hey, I love this feeling. It brings back memories of playing in the woods, even if it was an imaginary magical tent. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Tell me your favorite parts of this card and what you would do with the Build a Big Top die set. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please take a moment to do that now. And don't forget to check the description box for the list of supplies that were used today. Here are a couple of other videos that you might enjoy. And until next time, bye-bye.